Hi all, I'm Joe. Um, I run a lo longevity oriented biotech company called Retro. And um, I like hi hiring really amazingly capable people. And I noticed that one of the things that was happening, well, I like, I like the team to be a mix of people who are just starting off their careers, who, who have a ton to learn from people who have been doing research for 10 or 20 years. Um, and like all across that spectrum, right? Um, and people who are later in their careers like it because they can have the trade of teaching somebody a bit and um, then also them doing a whole bunch of extra stuff that they would rather not be doing because they want to, they've already done it. Um, they want to be at their skill edge, which is different stuff. So we go out looking for those kinds of people and some of them are like, yeah, I don't know about this whole science thing, but it seems to make money and that's good. And you know, I have like car payments and all that kind of stuff. So I'll just keep plugging away at it. Um, and then there are people who are like, oh my God, science, this is incredible. Uh, I'd like to go work there. Ooh, but no, I think I actually got to join this PhD program because then I'll be among other, all these other people who love science and um, I'll be learning from fancy professors and I'll get, um, I'll get a PhD, which means then the rest of my career will continue to be more and more science-y, um, which I found kind of disturbing. And first, um, my, my first reaction was, well, I'll create this like retro graduate research fellowship program, which um, says that if you go through this program, you'll learn a ton, and at the end, you can, you can do a scientist job, whatever that, whatever that means. Um, Partway through, a number of things happened. One, I was challenged to, and did indeed think a ton about how do people grow in my org? Um, how do we recognize their growth? How do we encourage their growth in the directions that they want to go, like the things that they want to learn to, the kinds of problems they want to learn to solve? And um, one of the things I concluded, which is a little, uh, edgy, uh, was that titles are complete bullshit and they mean almost nothing and they serve very little value. In fact, uh, my conclusion was negative value. Uh, so they actually hold back people's growth. Uh, so we, we ripped them all up. Um, I don't give out titles anymore. I am not no longer the Lord of, you know, <laughs> touching you on the head with a sword and saying thou art now a scientist too or whatever. Um, uh, so now we have a much higher resolution method of measuring uh, what people's capabilities are, where they're going, um, ways of tracking internally who's good at what, so other people can, can find that out. Um, and it's not just, well, this is kind of a scientist two sort of problem, so I'm gonna go find a scientist two rather than a scientist one. It's more like, I've never done qPCR um, on RNA before with these reference genes, um, who knows about how to pick reference genes and then you can just go look at who's an expert in that. That's been working great. Um, this, but this whole idea of like, you will complete this fellowship and then you will become a scientist um, then became vacuous because what does it mean that you are a scientist? Um, so I wanted to take a bigger swing and I ended up, um, I reached out to and made a really great connection with the CEO of a university and said, I want to do something different. Um, I want people to be able to learn a ton um, in my organization, which has tons of PhDs. Um, I want to do something about this sort of PhD thing that takes, draws people away from, I mean, we're doing incredibly exciting science. So if they want to do exciting science, they should be able to do it at Retro too, right? Um, so what is this PhD system? It's another one of these sort of guildish things. I don't know what the slide is for, but um, it's another one of these guild-like things where you know if you want to become a journeyman carpenter, then you have to work with the other um, carpenters for, as an apprentice for a while, and eventually a carpenter is able to bless another person to become a carpenter. Um, it's the sort of reproductive cycle of, of the professions, and PhDs are the same. You need a certain number of PhDs to come together um, and like germinate, a new, create a new PhD. Um, but I've like, well, I have an organization of 60 people and like roughly half of them have PhDs. So there's, there should be no problem from a sheer numbers perspective or brilliance perspective or whatever for like being able to germinate new PhDs 
in here. Um, so this CEO was like, really? Huh, that's interesting. And came by and visited our labs and was like, okay, this, something great is gonna happen here. There's a bunch of really smart people doing incredibly energetic, valuable things that they're excited about. Um, so let's, let's do it. Um, so we went through the requirements. They're, um, so they're like accredited through a European country, a tiny European country of Malta. And, um, but it's, you know, it's very structured and, and step by step and, and bureaucratic ish, like most of Europe. Um, no offense. Uh, it's a very effective system at certain things. And um, went through all the requirements and we came up with like a, a really effective program, I think, in terms of the, the structure and design. Um, so we rolled it out and immediately I got some free advertising from Lior Pactor, um, which I was hoping for, who said, this is stupid, this is ridiculous, this is gonna crash and burn. Um, and then like 40,000 people of his followers on Twitter heard about it, I was like, yeah. That's what I wanted. <laughs> um, so we're getting some really great applicants. And um, it's, it's like basically very similar to, so here's like a, like what I call trad PhD, um, which is slightly pejorative, but um, hopefully light, capital L. Um, so um, this is the retro PhD and just like looking at a bunch of the parameters that like questions that came up during the months that I was kind of like, God, can we really do this? Okay, let me try this out in a few people. And they're like, ah, um, how much is tuition? Uh, how much does it pay? Um, is it really accredited? Will I get an actual real PhD? All these kinds of questions. And like pretty much everything is, is like equivalent or better. Um, so we'll see. Right now we have two students. Um, one um, is doing incredibly, incredibly well, super, super smart, learning tons, becoming more and more capable, like my dream, like it's happening. Um, there's a bunch of hard work involved in it and that just like a normal PhD, you have to work your ass off. I mean, you have to like write uh, tons of papers and theses and do research and come in on weekends and, and, and like, you know, it's not a walk in the park, it's a PhD, right? Well, I mean, I guess it depends on where you, if you get your PhD from Stanford, maybe it's Pretty easy, but um, <laughs> most other places, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, no, I just tease that I have like Stanford grads in the building, so I like to tease them. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, you have to write three papers, um, at least one of, uh, all of publishable quality, whatever that means, um, and then at least one of which has to actually be published. Um, although theoretically, I think that could be bioarchive um, if necessary. It doesn't say like peer reviewed. Um, so I think it's an achievable bar. Uh, and then there's another 5,000 words of glue that you have to write to sort of sew these papers together into kind of like a, a narrative whole of some kind. Um, that's, that, that, that's, that's what's on offer. Um, what do you think so far? Yeah. I have a question. Can you comment a little bit more on the main difference that I see there, which is the penultimate line yeah. Um, in the normal PhD, you just promote it to papers, bullshit, who cares? Yeah. In your PhD, you improve human lives. Recently, I spoke with an investor, and he was saying, well, we have to change pharma. We should not evaluate any more units of treatment or how expensive the treatment is. We should be patient-centric and see how many human lives we improve. So how do you see that improve lives? In well, we're, we're like, a very like outcome and mission and patient driven company, uh, even more than a profit driven company, I would say. Um, I have one investor who is Sam Altman um, and he is like very explicitly like make progress for humanity and aging and probably will make some money out of it, but it not, not the highest priority. Um, so I'm gonna do my damnedest to make a bunch of money for him out of it because um, <laughs> he seems to then put it into other really cool things like fusion and whatever. Um, like I feel good about it, I, lo I love my investor. Um, um, but the, like my reason for starting it, my reason for being involved in this community, my, you know, why I love being into biology really generally is like humanity should really friggin' figure out what it's made of um, and keep it from breaking. Like right now we don't even need, know how to keep our substrate from breaking, which seems like from an alien scorecard perspective, highly pathetic. Um, <laughs> 
but you know, I own it. Like I'm pathetic, whatever. I don't know. I don't understand it yet. Um, but like, if I was made out of a computer and I didn't know how to fix the computer, I would feel kind of like, wait, why aren't I first figuring that out and then going to Mars or whatever? Well, I know Rand Corporation does phenomenal when it comes to taking straight kids out of college and mm -hmm. then they hundred percent pay. Of course, they have singular focus on what they develop. So in fact, they. Oops, sorry. Uh, Rand Corporation, of course, entirely focus on defense, right? Mm -hmm. For the longest time, they do an internal PhD. They do a full-blown PhD, fully paid by Rand Corporation. They continue to develop like DARPA. It's like a mini DARPA. So is there a pathway like that? Because it's very effective, that model has been super effective mm -hmm. in what they developed for decades. I only know one dude from Rand um, who seemed really cool. Um, now he donates to longevity causes. Um, <clears throat> Um, but I don't really know the difference. So all I know is like, okay, this is what I think I should do, and this is what I want people working on, and I, what I think is going to be good for them. I mean, if you see deltas between how they're doing it and how we're doing it, and you think that we could be doing it better, then I'd love to hear about it. Great. Cool. This is awesome. A um, lot of really good can come out of this. Um, how many slots do you? So it sounds like you. It's a new program. You're just announcing it and getting it, the word out, and you're getting applications. Uh, so it hasn't like fully started yet, is that correct? Or We have two full-time PhD students okay. presently, um, hired and started. And um, yeah, the second one seems amazing. She went to this very unusual undergraduate uh, college as well, uh, Minerva, um, which is kind of involves a lot of like diversity and travel and, and unusual experiences, and a lot of online component. Um, um, which, which I was like, oh, that's cool, because I'd heard about it beforehand. Um, and then she was like, should I do, I already did a weird undergrad, should I do a weird PhD too? And I was like, um, I don't know, like if you're gonna go for it, go for it. Um, <laughs> you probably look back and say, thank God, I did something consistent and coherent with my, How many slots do you anticipate in the next two years? Uh, well, right now we're hiring for three more. Uh, it's really dependent on who has the mentoring bandwidth. Because yeah. uh, it's, not, it's not it's just like, oh, it's okay, okay, let's take 10 of them. Like each one of them has to have some PhD person who w really wants to put in the time to take this person under their wing and show them all the, like, like it's kind of like there's like a taste element to it too. It's like, what does it mean to be a scientist? Like what is, what is going through a PhD uh, like, what should it feel like? What, like, they kind of want it, they, like I was saying, taste. Like, they want to impart taste to them, which is very nebulous. Um, but, the, but it's like when they start seeing them making judgments, and they're like, yeah, you're doing that thing now. Um, and, you know, there's, there's this whole, like, academia has this, for all of its flaws, has this, also this beautiful structure. And there's these lineages from amazing, inspired, you know, these, la these labs who, who did incredible stuff. Um, um, and then this person was the student of that person. Was a, you know, like the positive side of that is really inspiring. And then there's all these horrible dark sides of it. You know, like if you have, if you don't do something that your advisor wants you to do, then you live in fear that they should like pan you afterward because everyone will ask them if you're good or not. And then you, if you say no, then you'll completely destroy their life. So they have like godlike power, <clears throat> which is often corrupting. Um, but I like the idea of being part of that, um, like the beauty of science for science's sake, without all the politics of like trying to trying to vie for this junior professorship and trying to outcompete other people for your K ninety nine. Or you be a dean. Yeah, <laughs> a dean. Oh my god! I've got, all my life I've wanted to understand the so science of politics. Well, we have to. Okay, let's do one final question, but let's keep it brief, and then we we'll wrap it up. Okay, who hasn't spoken yet? Who? Did you have a question, Gary? No, yeah, I have a quick question. So, three publication in three years is a lot. Okay. It's a lot, yeah. So, who's going to, because my student yesterday came to you, to you guys and she yeah. in, in, in interviewed for you. Okay. So kind of collect the information for her as well. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be like a mentor. So, it's going to be the mentor who is going to make sure that, like, scientific background is going to grow. Because I totally agree with you that. 
it's a very valuable opportunity, but there should be supervision, meaning that the, the person needs to be also theoretically instructed during the distribution. Yeah, yeah. So that well, makes sense. Like on the question of like how many, then um, that's limited by people who are like authentically available and excited for the project of doing this. And not all my program leads even want this in their program. It's like I just want to stay focused on these deliverables and not have to worry about people who are asking questions all the time. But right now, three of them are like, yeah, I want to do this. Um, they look at what's already happened, and they're like, those guys are great. I want to hire someone like that. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. But I think, and like this is sort of answering, Lear's and a few other people on Twitter were just like, this is impossible. Like Papers are really hard in bio. But I think the unit of paper, for, well, like one of the reasons that like the whole paper mill thing is just BS is because there is no standard of paper. You know, if you, some journals would say you have to write like basically a novel for a paper, and it has to be like a five-year journey, of this like storytelling thing, and like every possible doubt of a of a, like a critical reader at each juncture has to be ex dispelled by five different experiments. Then you can go on to the next thing, and it's like it can be a pleasure to read them, but you know, you go to other papers, um, and someone, you know, it's it's just about like. We, we wondered you know, whether this cytokine would help this cell type differentiate better, so we tried the experiment, and yeah. it worked, and you publish it. And then like, you know, there's, a, there's a chart and a few hundred words, and like, you're done. Um, so it's very defined as, because it comes through this lineage of Malta and the bureaucracy or whatever, it has to be you know, 5,000 words about some topic. Um, so I think that's just going to be down to but like I say, only one of them has to be actually published. Um, so I think that makes it more tractable for a three-year time period. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much. Good. Also, Joe. Thanks.